Somebody start asking questions, I'd like that. I listen to my future more than I do my past. I think my past is what I stand on, my future is what I jump at. I have a fantastic voice. <laughs> I know it. It's constant energy. It doesn't end. While Yusuf Islam, better known as Cat Stevens, was already known for his masterful songwriting, his fourth album, T for the Tillerman, cemented his position as a talent to be reckoned with, all with a refreshed approach. Holy shit. Like, it literally is just so good from front to back. And it also really did bring back memories for when, um, you know, when I was a kid. Like, I literally listened to this thing every weekend, I reckon, for years upon end. It was crazy. I am still in awe of him as an artist. Still, for some reason, it just captures like this childlike wonderment. And it just, yeah, it reminds me of my father. I'm Mike from Happy, and this is why tea for the Tillerman mattered. Well, I call me Cat because i um, slightly independent from other things or situations that might happen, like today, for instance. I do find myself in this all the time. I find myself alone. Born Stephen Giorgio, Stevens hit the studio for the tea for the Tillerman sessions at just 21 years old. Having experienced the harsh realities of childhood divorce, being a schoolboy outsider, and surviving tuberculosis, experiences he channeled into a single album. This record's probably the whole reason why I started learning guitar um, and learning how to write songs as a young kid. The way that I learned how to play music was listening to mum and dad's records. And this was the one that I guess I started on. Uh, well, for me, it is kind of hard to separate from my relationship with my father. So when I listen to it, it, it it's all within the context of uh, my father's relationship with me just growing up and basically like experiencing like music as a young child for the first time will always that like wonderment weird optimistic enthusiasm that you has, have as a little kid arguably it was this ability to funnel such painful experiences that allowed stevens to break out onto an international stage moving away from the complex orchestrations of his earlier works on albums such as new masters towards a spacious simple and strong message i've thought very deeply about the lyrics on this one. I think it just might be getting clearer so that people might actually start to see uh, the real truth behind what I'm saying. Released in the midst of music's folk revival, T for the Tillerman broke away from his two albums released in 1967 on Duran Records, Matthew and Son and New Masters, which featured heavy lyricism amid lavish orchestrations. While these albums cemented his musical prowess in the UK, Stevens was derailed by tuberculosis in 1969, resulting in a year of rest. During this personal crisis, Stevens looked inward and meditated, resulting in a spiritual awakening that would influence his music forever. T for the Tillerman trimmed the fat of his earlier works in both songwriting and production. He managed to get himself released from his contract at Durham and signed with Island Records. The result began with 1970's Mona Bone Jacon, which led with the flamenco-inspired guttural single, Lady de Bonville, let alone the track Popstar, which solidified a new vision for Stevens in an album he wanted to create, alongside producer Paul Samuel Smith and guitarist Alan Davies. But where Mona Bone Jacon made a splash in the States, T for the Tillerman made waves globally. Recorded in the months leading up to his 22nd birthday at three studios across London, Morgan Studios, Island Studios, and Olympic Studios, the record contains his most iconic works to date, including Wild World, Where Do the Children Play, and my personal favorite, Father and Son. Father and Son, which is probably one of his most iconic songs. You know, it was a song that as he grew up further on, I was 14, 15, and everyone knew that I was starting to play music. It was always a song that everyone wanted wanted to hear. So yeah, it's, it's a very iconic record for, I guess, getting me into music. The generational values between you and your parents are just so stark. And I feel like this offered perhaps like an olive branch between those two generations. Even more impressive was Stevens' ability to force the rainbow into the prism and unify the elements of his songwriting and production that launched him in the first place. Cerebral orchestrations were replaced with sophisticated arrangements, allowing room to breathe. The opening motifs of Where Do the Children Play, for example, see Stevens and his band use simple harmonic movements, juxtaposed with double bass thumps, unified by the bell tones of an electric piano in the second verse. Subtlety takes priority, with Stevens' voice being complemented instead of distracted. Rather than a grand statement, 
The album makes a humble message frozen in time. Simplicity. Clarity and simplicity. But that's not to say that the album was devoid of nuance. Sadly, Lisa's intricate string arrangement broke away from the theme of Tea for the Tillerman and brought new insight to Stevens' catalogue. Meanwhile, Miles from Nowhere features a venturous slapback delay, a subtle nod to Lennon and Ono, while But I Might Die Tonight includes atmospheric reverb on the backing vocals. The daring results spoke for themselves, and Tea for the Tillerman was as much a commercial success as a critical one, selling over 3 million copies in the US alone and ushering in the golden age of Cat Stevens, with four more albums to follow on Island Records, including the equally commercially successful Teaser and The Fire Cat. This is why Tea for the Tillerman mattered, and still does today. I don't, I, I've never it's thought of any other thing that I could do. You know, if I, if I had something else I could do, I would do it but it happens to be music. It was the catalyst for the short-lived global success of Stevens, who retired less than a decade after a seminal album, after converting to Islam in 1977. It pushed boundaries for the songwriter, removing the excess, prioritizing the soul over the spectacle. Thanks so much for joining me today. I'll see you next time. Wherever you're gonna go, you're gonna go there anyway, so don't be frightened and relax.